Hello, I wanted to make a quick video to explain what I think is the simplest way to get audio output from your homebrew computer. This is focused on the 6502 based homebrew computers, uh, such as what Benita has been building. It should also work fine on the 8-bit breadboard computer with some minor adaptations if that's what you're working on. The principles are all the same, so let's get started. So what is the simplest way to get audio output? It is with one of these. This is a an active piezoelectric buzzer. Uh, there are two kinds of these which you need to be careful of. One is active and one is passive, so if you are buying these components make sure you get the right one. This one here is active and this one here is passive, so they look very very similar. The active one, if you look closely at it, has one pin longer than the other. That is the easiest way to tell the difference. The passive one does not. The passive one also has a visible circuit board in it, whereas the active one is blacked over. I don't know how common that is. Um, the, the length of pins is the easiest way to tell. Um, another way to make sure is to wire it up to a multimeter, measure the resistance of it. Uh, you should find that an active buzzer has a very high resistance, such as one mega ring, and a passive buzzer should have a very low resistance, such as about 20 ohms. So, how can we use the active buzzer in our circuit? Well, it's very simple. Active buzzer, all you need to do is give it 4 to 6 volts with the longer pin on the positive rail as usual, and it will buzz. That's all it can do. It can't do different pitches, it can't do different volumes. Um, changing the voltage does change the volume a bit, but it tends to make it very unstable and there's not, there's not much control over that. So let's give that a go as a quick demonstration. Here is a breadboard. I am going to place the active piezo buzzer across the middle somewhere. Get some power. Turn that on, and all I'm going to do is wire, wire the positive end up. I'm giving it 5 volts. This is from a USB power supply. Um, the buzzer takes about 30 milliamps. Um, USB can deliver 500 odd, so there's no, there's no problems there with the strength of the supply. And if I touch this, it makes a very loud buzz. So that works fine. Let's get rid of that now. What we're going to do next is put it into a computer. If you've been following along Ben Eater's videos, then I'm going to assume you have a VIA, a 6522 versatile interface adapter, already wired into your circuit. You probably have a few wires here and here wired off to an L LCD. That's absolutely fine. I don't have that in mind, but uh, we won't be using those pins, so it won't cause any problems. What we need to do is go and make a program which blinks one of the pins on and off at a steady rate, um, and then we'll come back and show that working on a buzzer. So this is the final Hello World program uh, as far as Ben has got through his videos so far. Um, it's the one he's calling Hello World Final anyway, I presume he's going to do more, but uh, this is it for now. Um, it's the one which uses the 6522 VIA to control an LCD and print out Hello World, and it's the one with the sort of refactored code to do the printing in a more structured way. Um, and we can very easily adapt this to toggle a different pin on the VIA to in, or, in, or, in, in order to beep our beeper. So notice that he's setting all eight pins of port B to output and only the top three pins on port A to output. So what we're going to do here is simply set one more pin to output on port A. This is going to be pin 4 of port A. Um, and then on the breadboard we need to make sure we use that pin when we connect the beeper. Uh, let's change the comment as well, just, just so that that's accurate. So top four pins to output. Uh, and now let's look at the rest of the code. So after initializing the LCD he prints a message um, and once that's done he jumps to this loop and this loop just carries on forever. So what we're, 
what we're going to do is after the message here we're going to insert a new function called beep and this function is going to turn the speaker on wait a short while and then turn the speaker off again um, and we're also going to add another function called delay uh, which will wait a configurable amount of time um, and we'll use this to time the beeps so what the delay function is going to do is uh, it will set the x register x register to zero and then it will uh, have its own internal loop and it's going to decrement the x register and if the x register has not wrapped all the way back around to zero again it's going to go back and loop and every time the x register does wrap around like that we're going to decrement the y register and if that has not reached zero again then we will go back to the same loop variable there so when we when we decrement y x is already zero otherwise we would have looped for x so when we loop back here x is already zero again we don't need to loop back to the initialization of x there um, and uh, it will just allow us to use the same label twice there and then we can return um, and this is a configurable delay you what you do is you load a value in the y register and then this delay will last however long uh, compared to what number you load in so if you load in 10 then it will last a certain amount of time if you load in 20 it will last twice as long so in our beep function we can load we need, we need to turn the speaker on here so what we will do is we'll load the bit mask which corresponds to the pin that we're going to put the speaker on I believe it was that one if you compare that to the DDRA initialization above uh, and we're going to store that on port A that will turn the speaker on um, that's all there is to it, that just turns the pin on and that, that'll be enough to drive the speaker the beeper um, after doing that I want to have a short delay so I'm going to load Y with um, let's just have a long delay for now actually, I'm just going to load Y with 0 here and JSL delay. this will give us a maximum delay and then I will load 0 into the A register and store it in port A. This will turn the speaker off again. And then it can return from the subroutine. So once again, we're loading the bit position that we're going to wire the speaker up to and setting that in port A. That will turn the speaker on. And later on, we're loading 0, in particular the bit our speaker is connected to is 0 here, and storing that in port A, that will turn it all off again. All the other bits are 0. That will affect things that are connected to those pins, but the way Ben is already using the LCD code, that is absolutely fine. So long as the top bit is 0, the LCD will ignore everything that happens to the other pins. And in the middle I have this short delay. Uh, I think this should be about a third of a second at at a one megahertz clock speed, you can adjust the number. If you want, uh, if you want a, a shorter delay, zero is actually the maximum. You can think of that as 256. Um, if you put 128, that would be half the length of this delay. And if you're running at a very low clock speed, you might want quite a low number here. Otherwise, you're going to be waiting around for a long time. So finally, we need to actually call our, fun our beep function. So in this loop that Ben left at the end of the program here, this, uh, after printing its message, it just sits in this loop going forever. What I'm going to do is just make it call the beep routine. This will issue one beep. And then we're going to do another 256 length delay here um, before we jump back to loop. So after printing the message, it will beep, it will wait, and it will loop back to beep again. And it will just do that forever. So after recording this segment, I realized I'd made a mistake. Uh, my system isn't 100% compatible with Ben Eaters, but I was trying to make this as compatible as I could. Um, however, I got port A and port B mixed up compared to what Ben uses them for. So everywhere that I refer to PB4 here, which is this pin over here, everything I connect to it, you need to be connecting those to P4 
PA4 instead, which is this one over here. Um, if you're using Benita's system, um, because he uses PB4 for something else. Um, so when I did the code segment, I did use PA4 correctly uh, in, in terms of adapting his code, but it, just in this practical segment, I used PB4 instead. So make sure everywhere that I use PB4, you use PA4, which is pin 6 of the 6522. So great, we have that little blink program all programmed into the EEPROM and into the circuit here. What I'm going to do now is use an LED first of all to demonstrate that working and then look at using the buzzer. So to wire an LED across the VIA output pin we need to use a current limiting resistor. Um, we're going to wire this from PB4 because that's the one I'm toggling, so that's 7654. If you have the LCD connected you probably actually have three wires there. Um, as I said, so PB5 is used by Ben's circuit, so we're using PB4. I'll wire that in there, and I will add an LED from there to ground, like so, with the long end, oops, the ground, not, not the plus rail, with the long end upwards, and turn it on, and it should flash. So that works perfectly. So let's see what we can do with the buzzer then. I'm going to take a short wire, because we, we can't use the resistor with the buzzer, it needs more current than that, so I'm wiring this from the same pin. Um, I'll wire it over here as before. Um, I'm going to take the buzzer and I'm going to take its longer pin and connect it directly to the output terminal there, or to the wire coming from the output terminal. and I'm going to connect the other side of the buzzer to ground. So we're here we're wiring the buzzer between ground and the 6522 output pin. Let's see what happens. Not much at all. So the circuit is working but the buzzer is not sounding and the reason for that is because as I said before these buzzers need quite a large current. It, I think I measured 30 milliamps going through this one at about 5 volts. So the 6522 isn't able to deliver that amount of current when it is sourcing the current. However, it can deliver that current when it is syncing the current, so let's have a go at that. If I swap the connections over there, and I'm going to take this pin to the positive rail instead of the negative rail now. The buzzer is now wired between the positive rail and the output pin of the 6522. And let's try that one more time on the, and turn the power on. And as you can hear, that worked perfectly. So there's one option, we could do it that way around. What this means is that if we want the beeper to sound, we have to drive the output pin low. And if we want the beeper to not sound, we have to drive the output pin high. So you can certainly put it in your computer this way around if you want to. You're going to have to make sure that every time you write to this register, you always set this pin high if you're doing it for other reasons. For example, all of the LCD code, which drives the LCD, uh, whenever it works to this register, you need to make sure it turns this pin high, otherwise it's going to start beeping all the time. So do we have any other options? Yes, we do. We could invert the pin uh, using a transistor and let the transistor drive the high current through the buzzer. So let's give that a go next. I'm going to remove this from the circuit now. I'm going to remove that little white wire as well, probably come in handy later. And I'm going to go find the transistor. So this is a 2N3904 NPN transistor. It's the one that I always use as a default whenever I need an NPN. I'm going to put it in the circuit just here. So the pins on this particular transistor, you do have to check this on the data sheet because they're not all the same, even with the same package style. The pins are in the order emitter, base and collector. What we're going to do is we're going to wire the pin of the 6522 to the base of the transistor and I'm going to do that through a 5K, let's use a 4K7 resistor, close enough. I'll explain the choice of resistor in a bit but about 5K is usually pretty good for, for base current control resistors. So I'm just going to wire that straight from the same pin we used before over to the base of the transistor. Obviously you can do this much more tidily if you're sticking with the circuit. 
I always prototype things pretty messily though, just so that it's quick to quick to experiment. Um, so this this output pin can now control the current through the transistor. The base, uh, sorry, the emitter of the transistor is going to go straight to the negative rail. You can use that nice little white wire again, like that. And the collector is going to go through the buzzer and to the positive rail. Let's turn it on and see what happens. So as you can see that now works perfectly uh, and that is now beeping when the pin is high which is probably easier for us to adapt in our code. So there you have it, a very simple circuit to get some form of audio output from your homebrew computer. Um, like I said this can be adapted to work with the SAP based 8-bit breadboard computer if that's what you're working on. Uh, you're gonna need some form of memory register or latch to drive the transistor base uh, because you don't have the 6522 to do that for you but you've already done that loads of places elsewhere in your circuit all of your registers basically are able to do this anything that's driving an LED in your circuit can do this already so that should be no problem to figure out how to do um, and as I said this is a very simple form of audio output these buzzers are not very capable they're not very flexible all they can do is make that one beep um, and roughly the same volume regardless of how much voltage you put across them as well um, and you certainly can't change the frequency so if you want to make music this is not the way to do it however um, it is a very simple and quick way to get some form of audio output from your computer I'm probably going to do a follow-up video showing how to do this differently with different components in order to uh, get better quality sound out particularly having pitch and volume and uh, chords and things like that um, so if you're interested in that, please do subscribe and hit the bell to get notifications. Let me know in the comments if you're interested as well, and I'll make sure I get on with that. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this, and good luck with your future projects.